Simon Munnery, welcome to the Comedy Club. Oh, thank you, Rob Deering. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. And uh, I feel, I have to admit, what, though... I'm, but you want to ask me how I am? Yeah, I'm going I'm, to, I'm, I want to say, how are you? Are you OK? All right, not bad, getting worse. Thank you. <laughs> well, I did, just the fact that we're, what we're talking about doesn't make me feel strangely superannuated. Old, is that? Yeah, that's old. Thank you. I'll, right. I'll translate as you go along. Thanks very much. Um, because, you know, we're talking about comedy that you were doing, um, you know, in in the third decade ago from now. <laughs> yeah. So, because <laughs> we've got some lovely yeah. stuff that you did for Radio 1 in the mm. 90s. Tell me about, the, uh, about Alan Parker, Urban Warrior, and doing him on the radio. Yeah, um, Alan Parker, Urban Warrior, was a character. Uh, angry young man, sort of uh, um, revolutionary, uh, would have been a would be punk rock singer, but without the band, or the band had all left. Mm -hmm. But it started. Uh, it was one particular train journey. I used to be in a double act called God and Jesus, and we were on a particular one train journey. And Alan Parker and Warrior and the League Against Tedium character did later. Both came out that same train journey, but Alan Parker came came out first. But it was just the, the original idea of Alan Parker was just a, a bloke standing with his legs wide apart as in the Clash first album. Um, <laughs> really like, overly wide apart in front of some rubble in the scene of Urban Decay and going, yeah, as if that was all that needed to be said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that was the sort of origin of the tone of voice. And from then on, it's, it wrote itself. Well, I wrote it. Um, <laughs> I just, I just you this, wrote it yourself. Uh, I wrote it myself, yeah. <laughs> it just sort of it poured out uh, and kept pouring out for years and years and finally sort of withered a bit. There came a point where I stopped doing it when... Because I used to, when I first started doing it, not for, for years, I used to actually cry. <laughs> genuinely cry. I mean, I don't know, sort of level of acting. I don't know what you call it acting, but there was one bit... Performance, like, for sure. Well, there was one part where I go... I, I, I just calm down. I, I, I'll do the joke because it's probably not in the, the right thing. A man walks down the street in his hands, a can of beer. He passes another man carrying a four pack. Cheers, mate. They salute each other, though they have never met. OK, it's a utopian dream, maybe, but I still cling to it. <laughs> And I used to cry at that point, <laughs> and <laughs> it was like just utterly moved by his own vision. But uh, as but after a few years, I just could not do it at the same sort of level. So I was still pretty good at it, but it got you know things turned stale. Like, like, like you, you can't do them so well anymore. Um, so and how did how did Alan Parker? Because uh, um, I'm just thinking about this because we're going to play um, 29 minutes of Alan Parker. Yeah. I want to know how that got from that train journey and that image of the rubble to to Radio One. Yeah, that I couldn't. I you know it happened in the past. I, so I was doing it as a character, um, and two out of three times it go well. One out of three times it wouldn't go well. You know, on the circuit just for for years. And I don't know the exact process how it ended up ready one. Um, I do know um, the producer was Sarah Smith. I do know, and I should should thank her because I failed to. I got I won the um, uh, Sony New Best Newcomer Award, right? And at the award ceremony, a uh, dreadful faux pas I made. Anyway, I was I got a gig that night at Alan Parker in Leeds. So I'm waiting there. I didn't think I'd win. I'm just it's a big. You know, lots of people sitting around tables, bow ties and all that. And I was just thinking, I'm just waiting for to hear who won my, the award I was up for. And thinking, I've got to get to Leeds. I've got to get to Leeds. I'm just going, to, you know, as soon as that's done, I'm going out the door, get try and get to the train, get to Leeds to do this gig. Anyway, I won. Um, and, and I just walked across the stage, took the award, went thanks, and without breaking my stride, was out the door. <laughs> and I should have thanked Sarah Smith because she put a lot of work in. And in, in those days, you know, that was cutting tape. It was back in those days, cutting tape late at night. snipping it up. God, yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, yeah, it sounds like uh, she was a you know a heroic mover behind the scenes yeah. in this whole movement. But on the other hand, just saying thanks and going to Leeds has a wonderful purity oh, to it's, it. It's nice and short, isn't it? I mean, compared to, oh, I think this and that. I think, uh, brevity yeah. is the soul of it. I wish, you know, it's something that Meryl Streep could consider next time she's at the Oscars. Uh, <laughs> just come you, and say thanks and go to you, Leeds. You can cut it down further. Ta! <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and there'll be more from Mr Munnery later in the week tomorrow night I'll be chatting to one half of Lee and Herring and latterly king of the podcast Richard Herring so be sure to tune in tomorrow if you're <laughs> hard of Herring hard of Herring <sighs> you're listening to the comedy club the comedy club the comedy club the comedy club on BBC Radio 4 Extra hooray hooray 